Hey guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Fossil Friday. So apologies because I have been a bit quiet the past few weeks but with good reason my life is just going at like a million miles an hour at the minute which is amazing but it's very hard to keep up with kind of filming videos that take quite a few hours to prep fossils and unfortunately I've just not had any content to share with you guys but I'm getting back on top of things, um, slowly but surely, because I literally, I go to India tomorrow. And when I say India, I am going out there for a holiday, um, so I'm going there for fun and then also for a friend's wedding. So it's just going to be such an amazing trip over the next two weeks, because I've never been before, so I'm also going to be a proper tourist and do the Taj Mahal, the Pink City, all that jazz. So. Yeah, if any of you have been to India, let me know um, any recommendations down below. I fly tomorrow, but obviously you're watching this today, so I have time to read them all at the airports. But um, yeah, and then I'm moving house in February, so it's just a bit of a crazy time in my life right now. A wonderful time, but um, I'm sure a lot of you can sympathise that just sometimes everything happens all at once. But I'm doing really well, it's just hectic. Um, so I just thought I'd share a little update for those of you who are wondering. And it is freezing in England at the moment. Like I am, yeah, I think it's minus three. And uh, there's been like a few days this week where it's been like just, oh, really, really cold. So um, yeah, hope you're doing well. And if you're not in England, you're probably thinking, minus three, minus four, that's nothing. But for us Brits, it's, it's cold, okay? <laughs> um, but in today's video, we're gonna be prepping some fossils, so um, yeah, let's get to it. So I've decided that the prep that I wanna to do today, I want it to not include water because it's so cold, I think my fingers will fall off if I add water into the equation. So we're gonna be prepping some fossils that don't need um, cleaning first, mainly because I've already cleaned them or they just came from kind of a very clean fossil site. Um, so we're gonna start with shells actually. Obviously I know ammonites are shells, but more like brachypod bivalve kind of shells. So I haven't, you know, I thought I'd shake it up a little bit. There still will be ammonites in this video because it wouldn't be an M Gems video if there wasn't. Um, but I just, I spotted these specimens and I thought it'd be nice to shake it up a little bit. So I've got some lovely bivalve specimens. So here we have what looks to be a 3D kind of clam shell. So what's nice is you literally have both valves here, like both sides are intact, it's not been flattened, so sediment obviously filled this um, to keep its shape. And I just think that's lovely that it's literally a double-sided one. It's not in the best nick, but it's not bad at all. And to think this is from the Jurassic and has survived all this time. And these creatures, they're, they're still around in our waters today. Like evolution just decided they're pretty good. We don't need to worry about those. And then I've got this really cool piece. So this is a cast of a bivalve. I thought well, maybe it's a brachypod actually looking at that. That one's longer than this one. So with brachypods the valves are different um, sizes like the two halves. So maybe I don't know a lot about shells. It's especially fossilized ones. I love to collect them but they're not my forte so I'm still kind of picking that up. But I just thought it's got such a like signature shape like even though it's not got any of the shell left and it is just kind of that infill sediment you know exactly what it is. So I just thought that was really cool. I don't think I'm gonna paraloid this one. I think I might just leave it as it is, but I just wanted to show you guys because it's so cool. And then I've got this lovely um, specimen. So here we have vertical ridges on it. And what's lovely is on every fifth ridge, you've got this slightly higher ridge. So that'll be really useful in identifying what species this is. So you can just see if it focuses nicely for you. There's a lot of detail in this little piece. So I think with a nice bit of paraloid, that should just bring out those details ever so slightly more. And then the two ammonites I've decided to prep are this beautiful Harposerus. Now I have a soft spot for Harposeruses like this because they're just some of my favorite ammonites. And what I love about this one is you can see here, whilst it was being fossilized, it got deformed slightly. But what it means is the suture lines actually stand out now. So it almost got folded. So it might have landed on something. So it's kind of just been like snapped in half, but it hasn't been snapped. It's just in the process of bending over something, which means the suture lines kind of poke out. So it's just got so much detailing. So you've got suture lines, you've got ribs, you've got a center. I just love it. You've got everything you could want in that piece. So that's gonna look gorgeous with a just a very thin coat of paraloid that one needs just to make it sparkle. And then I love this piece. So this is only a fragment, but sometimes fragments are my favorite because look at those suture lines up here. You've got so much detailing, but my favorite part of this is the center. It's almost like the this uh, kind of inner outer world going around the middle bit 
it frames that perfect center and it's just even though there would have been loads more to this ammonite it's just got its own kind of quirk i just love the center like it's not completely perfect it is missing that very um central bit but i just think it looks spectacular so a nice coat of paraloid i think that will just bring it out so I've just noticed in the side of this fossil that we actually have the remnants of what would have been a sea urchin. So I don't know if it'll focus enough for you. It's not very large. Um, I'll put my nail for scale. Um, but you can see that symmetry that you would see on an echinoid. Um, so there, there used to be an echinoid kind of in the rock here that's obviously popped out. But it's quite cool that you can see the kind of remains on the side there. So what we're going to do now is I've got a brand new toothbrush. Look, it even has a case on it, this one. So these, once these get discarded by people, I have like a little box of toothbrushes because they're just so useful for fossils. The bristles just last a lot longer than other brush brushes I find. So I'm just going to give them all a brush over to make sure they're not dusty. And then we're going to put some Paraloid B72 on them all just to give them a very nice coat of varnish to help bring out the kind of spectacular colors and detailing that is within them. So I'm just brushing off any kind of loose bits that are on the fossil that might kind of go into the paraloid because once I put the paraloid on that's a permanent coat of varnish so the last thing I want is for bits of unnecessary kind of dust and dirt to go in with it. So this one's pretty good. Um, I'm just going to give this shell a brush over. And then I'm not putting any paraloid onto this specimen. I just don't think it needs it. It's pretty happy as it is. Um, so I'm just going to really get in there with the ammonites because they've got so, so many kind of details and places for dust to hide that as soon as you start putting the paraloid on, the paintbrush is going to just pick it all up. So I find a toothbrush is just really good at dislodging anything that's hiding in a little crook or cranny. That looks good. And then the big one, I just want to make sure I get kind of under the whirls. Like so. So I'm going to start with this shell here. Now for the paraloid solution, this is a very weak solution and you just have to dilute the little B72 granules in acetone. Um, so I'll link everything down below that I use um, in case you're looking for a good varnish for fossils. Um, I just find this is really useful because you can use it as an adhesive or you can use it as a varnish. You kind of just make the consistency that you need for whatever project you're working on. Um, so it's just a really useful solution and it's not expensive and it just even if you're kind of an amateur collector it just really brings out your finds like it just adds and once it's on you don't actually realize the specimen has it on so you can see with this one it's not like crazy shiny or takes away from the spectacular kind of detailing of the fossil i just find it enhances it because i don't put it all over the rock so i only put it on the fossil and i think that's the key key part unless it's a crushed fossil or in like a clay then you have to put it all over um just to protect the fossil because unfortunately they crumble so um i've done videos on crushed or more delicate fossils in the past so if you're interested you can find those on my channel so with this one, I'm trying to just paraloid the shell. So I want to avoid paralo paraloiding the matrix. I nearly, I nearly said paralyzing then. Um, that's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> Even though these are rock now and technically they're not going to do much moving. So with this one, we're going to have to do the other side as well. But I will do that once I know this side is fully dry and I can kind of lay it down. But you can see it just kind of brings it out a little bit more, I find. So I'm just going to move those to one side. So they're the shells. So now, I think I'll do the ammonite last, the big one. I'm going to do the little one first. So just a nice thin coat of paraloid is all we want. It brings out colours that you just never knew were in the rocks in the first place. Like it really just enhances what's already there. So 
So you have to be careful doing the centre part of ammonites because you don't want the paraloid to all kind of fall into the middle. So you want to make sure it's still evenly spread. Otherwise you do lose some of that detailing. If you just make like one big kind of paraloid bubble in the center, it's not ideal. Just like that. So that's looking lovely. So now we're gonna work on the big one. So this one I'm just gonna try and start in one place and then just periodically kind of paint around it. This is very therapeutic to do as well. If you like kind of anything crafty or painting or anything like that, this is just so relaxing to paint on, I find. And you can't really do it wrong. Once you've done it a few times, it becomes so natural what you're doing. Voila, there you have it. So you can see they now just, it just enhances those kind of browns and oranges that were naturally in, especially the ammonites. So you can see that one there. And then even this fragment, look at that centre now. It's just got so much character to it. And I think this little shell here has really kind of come out its shell, if you will. <laughs> and this one as well, I think it just enhances the shell ever so slightly. So this one I need to turn over and do the other side of once it's fully dry. The ammonite, I think I'll leave it just one side because what's nice is only one side is fully prepped. This side is still kind of with a lot of matrix. So it's kind of, this is the prep side. And then when you turn it over, you can see what it originally looked like. So you kind of get the best of both worlds, all natural and then a little bit prepped which I think is lovely, but look at the detailing on this. It's just amazing. Like I just never get bored of just sitting for hours looking at this stuff. Like I find it so therapeutic, but just so amazing to think that these were once living creatures swimming around our oceans. Like it's incredible. And the center of this one is so interesting. I mean, look at that. It almost looks like the burnt bit of crust just like kind of wrapping around the middle or even little flakes of crisps. Like it's just so interesting to see how they all just preserve slightly differently. Like I love that this one has this fracture here in the shell. It's still complete, but it's just got its own little story to tell. It's just so fun trying to piece together what happened to them before they died and then became fossils and I then found them. <laughs> So that's all I got for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode of Fossil Friday. It was a lot of fun. I just love transforming fossils with just very kind of minor prep goes a long way, I find anyway. But um, yeah, if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. My social media is linked down below as well if you'd like to follow me on there. So I will be in India next week, but um, yeah, if I can share a little something, I will. If not, I'll be posting on my Instagram, I'm sure. But um, look after yourselves and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.